And so we want to teach you guys this new song um, this morning. I'm going to teach you the chorus, so when we get to it, so you'll uh, get to it, you'll kind of know. It goes, uh, it goes a little bit like this. This is, this is how it goes. Let the nations be glad. Let the people rejoice. For salvation belongs to our God. Let the whole earth be filled. With the praises of the Lord, for salvation belongs to our God. Let the nations be glad. It's pretty easy, right? Yeah. yeah. You guys want to try that with me? Let's, let's, let's sing that together just so when we get there, we're kind of like, oh, okay, we know what it is. Because learning a new song can be a little difficult sometimes, for me at least. I don't know about you. So let's try it together. It goes like this. Let the nations be glad, let the people rejoice, for salvation belongs to our God. You guys sound really good. Let the whole earth be filled with the praises of the Lord, for salvation belongs to our God, let the nations be glad. Y'all think you got it? All right. Let's sing it together. Here we go. Wrong button. Here we go. The verse goes like this. Let the glory of the Lord forever be our joy. May redemption be the theme of our song. For by grace we have been saved, and by grace we shall proclaim to the corners of the earth that Christ is come. Amen. Let's sing it together. Let the nations be glad. Let the people rejoice. For salvation belongs to our God. Yeah. Let the whole earth be filled with the praises of the Lord. For salvation belongs to our God. The age is gone before Through the trial and the sword Many saints and martyrs conquered Though they died Still we're holding out the cross Crossing ocean, suffering loss Shall endure all things to win The crown of life Let the nations Let the people rejoice, for salvation belongs to our God. Let the whole earth be filled with the praises of the Lord, for salvation belongs to our God. As your holy church goes forth in the Holy Spirit's power, with the glories of the gospel to exclaim, now we pray your kingdom come, and we pray your will be done, for the glory and the honor of your name. Let's sing it together. Let the nations be glad, let the people 
people rejoice, for salvation belongs to our God. Let the whole earth be filled with the praises of the Lord, for salvation belongs to our God. Let the nations be glad. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Yeah. 
for this time to come together and sing your praises and to celebrate how good you've been. So God, as Pastor Buck gets ready to come, as he gets ready to bring us your word, God, I pray that you would just help us know that there are people who can't sing that song. They haven't heard. They don't know. And God, that you would teach us how to be a people who go and make disciples. We love you, Lord. We pray in your strong and holy name. May be seated. I think we're good now. Got a little tech help uh, in between the prayer. Uh, But today uh, I want to catch you up a little bit about where we've been, uh, but also where we are going. Okay. Um, so week one, we talked about in this series, um, the reason we titled it as you go is that the command is that as you are going, make disciples of all the nations, right? And so what we decided to do is focus on one of the greatest missionaries the world has ever seen, this guy named Paul. And what Paul's doing in this passage is he is sharing his mindset um, of what it looks like to be uh, a missionary, okay? So 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23. And so week one, we talked about the fact that when Paul says he was free, um, he was free from death. One of the things we have in Christ uh, is security in the life to come, right? That we are free. Now, one of the things that we're also free from is the free from a life ruled by sin, right? If we learned anything about life um, is that sin is destructive, right? That we are all riddled with this problem um, of sin. But we also talked about the fact that Paul is freed from sin, but to relationship with God and that relationship with God produced his desire to want to reach people. Right, that Paul wanted to win people for the gospel. He says he became whatever it took. He was centered on the good news of Jesus, that it had changed his life in such a way, his sole desire is that it would change the lives of others. Right, that Paul was all about reaching people um, for Jesus. And so we're going to talk about today, if you'll take this down, this is really what I want to focus on. Ask yourself the question if you're taking notes what will we do with the gospel? Hear that again. What will we do with the gospel? And so I want to be short today. You're like, Pastor, preachers don't be short. What are you talking about, right? Uh, But I promise you that is my aim. Uh, And I want to look at and let you guys see the fruit of people living on mission, the fruit of people embracing uh, what it means to live out the gospel. So point number one, if you'll write this down, Uh, Paul was uh, devoted himself to the word of God. Paul devoted himself himself uh, to the word of God. And you'd say, okay, well, well, I want you to meditate on that word devotion. Like what does devotion um, mean to you, right? If we've learned anything about our culture, would you guys say uh, here in Georgia, we are mildly devoted to Georgia football, right? Would you guys say that's a devotion? Um, I, I think it proves it when like the rest of the country shutting down the SEC is like, push on brother, football, right? It's such a, a devotion. We, we spend time 
uh, focused on it. We, we, we give our money to it. We set aside time on, on Saturdays to make sure we're there, that we're tuned in, right? Well, Paul was taking devotion to a, another step. I want you guys to read with me Galatians chapter one. Galatians chapter one, starting in verse 11. This is what it says. Paul says, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Basically, he was saying, man, I was the man in religion and all these things. But it says, when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me that I may preach among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult with any human being. Now, verse 17, he said, I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia, later to uh, Damascus. Verse 18, it says, after three years, okay, this is on the screen, but after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with the others. So check this out. Uh, Paul was devoted to the Bible. My boy spent three years just studying the Bible. All right, like I'm like, dude, what, what did you do? Like, what did you eat? He spent three years time with God and studying the scriptures, learning how to be with God. Now you ask yourself, like, why was Paul uh, so devoted to the word, right? Because the Bible says this. He went on and, and uh, he wrote to his friend Timothy. He says that the Bible is profitable for training, right? For training and equipping and training people for every work of righteousness. Now, wouldn't you guys agree? How many of you have ever felt bad or, or guilty that you don't read the Bible enough? Anybody ever felt that way? Come on, man, don't you be lying up in church now. Some of y'all, man, I, I know you, right? But no, we, we feel guilty because uh, we, we know, man, well, I need to read the Bible more, right? I need to read the Bible more. But a lot of times we may have heard it our whole life. We may have heard it uh, in Sunday school or maybe it just felt like it was something good to do. But a lot of times we don't hear the why. And then a lot of times we go to the Bible just simply because we want to feel better about ourselves. We want to get direction. And the awesome part is, those things happen, but I want you to know something, okay? You weren't just saved from your sin. You were saved for a purpose and a mission. Hear that again. So it says that we go to the word, not only that we would uh, grow, feel better and all these sorts of things, but we go to the word to be trained because God wants to teach us things. And when God teaches us things, what I want you to learn is this. God teaches us things so that we can give things away. Hear that again. God trains us in the word of God so that we would know him, but also so that others would come to know him. And that training does not happen um, by, by doing enough good works, being enough good person. No, it happens through spending time with God, learning how to commune with the Holy Spirit, learning how to pray, seeking the Lord. And I want to tell you, man, I can give a hundred funny examples up here. Uh, I can give some great one-liners, but I want to tell you anything that's ever happened in the history of Connection Church has happened because we've been faithful to preach the word of God. That apart from the word and apart from the Holy Spirit, nothing will happen. Paul was dedicated. So I want to speak to the believer real quick. Okay, um, If you know you've given your life to Christ, Christ is first in your life. I, I want to encourage you. Okay, Become devoted to the word like Paul. It says for the sake of the gospel, Paul did whatever it took. So I want to tell you, write this down if you're taking notes. For the sake of the gospel, we read the word of God. Right? Not only for us, but for the sake of the gospel. We read the word of God, that the word of God is a part of our life because we believe God is forming us into his own image. And no matter where you come from, no matter what your track record is, no matter how unequipped you feel you are, you feel you are, let me tell you something. It is the spirit of God and through the word of God that you will be equipped to do far more than you could ever ask or imagine. The word of God is essential. It's essential part of our life. We want to know the one who saved us we want to be trained so that the one that saved us will reach others. Amen? Amen. Secondly, you can, um, I'm going to be in Acts 20, 17 through 24. Acts 20, 17 through 24. And this is what it says in Acts 20, starting in verse 17. 
It says, from Miletus, Paul sent to the Ephesian elders, okay? Ephesus to the elders of the church. Let me tell you, Ephesus was a place Paul planted a church. Elders were the leaders of the church. So imagine he's talking about the leaders. And it says, the whole time I was with you, I'm sorry, when they arrived, he said to them, you know how I lived the whole time I was with you. From the first day I came into the province of Asia, I served the Lord with great humility and with tears and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I, was not, that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. Hear that. I've declared to both the Jews and the Greeks that they must turn to God in, re <clears throat> in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, and now compelled by the what? What did I say where the change happened? Word of God and the Spirit. He says, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, knowing what will happen to me, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Now, verse 24, hear this. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Second point, take this down. Paul chose obedience over comfort. Hear that again. Paul chose obedience over comfort. He chose to obey more than what was comfortable for him. Understand when he's talking about the severe testing and the trials, he's going into cities where he is, he is persecuted. Right? Like he, he is not staying um, in, in, a, in his comfort zone. Like he's not hanging out in Jerusalem. The, were there people that needed to be taught in Jerusalem? Absolutely. But the Holy Spirit compelled him, Paul, I have more for you to do. I want you to go to these regions. I want to tell you when he says he's about to go to Jerusalem, he's going and will be arrested. And ultimately that will be the reason um, he reaches the end of his life because uh, of him testifying to uh, the believers in Jerusalem. I'm sorry, the people in Jerusalem. And so whatever Paul did, he was compelled to obey more than just comfort, right? Like how many of us would say our comfort zone is what holds us back from being effective, right? Because we see Paul as this, this, this guy, this stud, and man, he was. Like dude planted churches everywhere and he, he discipled them, he strengthened them. The reason we have the gospel today, the reason we have hope in Christ, the reason we can celebrate is because Paul was faithful to take the gospel forth. And so just, just hear this. He did whatever needed to be done so that people could hear the gospel and be saved. Hear that again. He did whatever it took for people to hear the gospel and be saved. And I want you to write this down. In gospel living, without sacrifice, there is no reward. Hear that again. In gospel living, without sacrifice, there will be no reward. I've never stood out in faith and obeyed the Lord where it was comfortable for me. Right, And so you'd say, well, Buck, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to go plant a church. Let me tell you what your next step looks like, okay? For some of you today, your next step needs to be your first step, and it's to give your life to Christ. Now, let me tell you what held me back from making that decision for so long, the fear of what people would think, right? The fear of I was going to lose these things in my life that, that I really felt like were precious. And if we really look back on our lives, the things that we feel that are precious are actually the things that are crippling us. Amen? Isn't that true so many times? It's the things that, that we want to hold on to that has really brought us no life. It, it, it's brought us pain. It's brought us difficulty. And yet, because of sin in us, we want to hold these things. But I want to tell you, man, when you step out in faith and trust Jesus for the first time, He's going to change your life and it will change for the better. Amen? And I get somebody to testify to the truth of that word. Next is baptism, right? Of Man, what would people think if I went public? Let me tell you something, man. Um, the Bible says that uh, anytime in the New Testament when someone gets saved, it says to repent, place your faith in Jesus and be baptized. What I've learned many times, we're gonna learn at the end of this message is that our steps of faith grow our confidence and our relationship with the Lord. But when people see us obeying the Lord, it begins to change them. Your next step may be more about someone else than you. Hear that again. Your next step may be instrumental in someone else coming to faith in Christ. Maybe for some, it's joining a connect group, right? Maybe it's, it's getting uncomfortable that, man, I've never read the Bible in my life. 
you keep saying, but small groups where to go, are they going to judge me? First of all, let me say no to that, right? We exist to meet people where they are and help them get where God wants them to be. If you've been holding back from community, joining heart and soul, let me tell you something. It will be a life changing experience for you. I want to encourage you. Get uncomfortable to obey. God will go with you. For some of us, it's our need to finally share the gospel. We've got that person in our life and we know God has called us to, to, to reach that person, to, to invite them to church or to begin discipling them to share the message. I want to encourage you. Paul did not let comfort stop him from obeying the message. And I want to tell you, God calls us to do the same. We are to obey. And I want to tell you, God isn't looking for ability, right? In fact, I want to tell you all something funny. You know, Paul's a, Paul's a, a stud, right? Like he's preaching um, and he's, people are getting saved and he's planting churches. You know, Paul was not a good preacher, right? Like that's the weird part many people don't know. Uh, it, that Paul, in fact, the Corinthians said, Paul, you're kind of weak, dude, when you get up there and preach, right? I'm glad Paul is more secure. You want to, you tell me that, man, I might tear up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But Paul, they literally told him, you're kind of weak, man. Like, like, like Apollos, when he preaches, man, he, he tears the roof down on this place. Paul, you kind of, you're kind of short, man. And again, I take that to heart too. You know what I mean? They're like, you're kind of weak, man. But Paul said, man, I, I didn't come to, to play charades and to give all these things. He said, I knew one thing. I'm going to preach Christ and Christ crucified. So it wasn't about ability. And so for you, it's not about your ability. What it is is about your availability to God. Hear that again. It's not about your great ability. Talent and all those things are awesome, but I've learned humility is the key for someone to be used greatly by God. It's someone that does not become independent in their own gifting, but it's someone that becomes totally dependent on God's gift, and that's the Holy Spirit, all right? That's where we're gonna be used greatly by God. And so take this down. We're gonna talk about this. For the sake of the gospel, we obey, even when it's uncomfortable. Hear that again. For the sake of the gospel, we obey even when it's uncomfortable. And lastly, I want you guys to turn with me to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. And then we're going to have a little celebration, man. And I'll tell you guys what that's going to look like. 2 Corinthians 5. We'll start in verse 2. This is Paul talking about why. Why? He says, meanwhile, we groan. We groan longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, right? Longing, longing to be clothed. So I, I wanna talk about it like this. There's a weird dichotomy in Christianity, okay? It's a already there, but not yet. It's a weird in-between. Anybody ever been caught and stuck in the middle? Like if two people are arguing or something, you're kind of the guy caught in the middle. It's a weird in-between, right? Christianity works like that. Because Paul says, I long to be clothed with my heavenly body. In fact, I want you to write this down before I explain it. Point number three, Paul enjoyed the blessings of the gospel. The blessings of the gospel, right? And so when we are dead in our sin, when, we've, uh, when we have not trusted the Lord and we uh, live our life in sin, we're, we're born in the sin. Sin is deeper than bad things we do. It's who we are. It's what, it's what is wrong with the world. It's what fractured the world. When we're living in sin, we are separated from God, right? Like we, God is in heaven. Jesus is with him at the right hand. And because of our sin, we're not there. We're separated, okay? But God loved his people so much, he sent Jesus to us in our sin. And he said, hey, if you'll place your faith in me, I'll save you, right? I'll give you a hope in the future. The Bible says no one comes to the Father except through Jesus. Now, when we accept Jesus as Lord, our souls go to be with the Father, secured, right? The Bible says he seals us with the Holy Spirit, the helper. And that seal is like when you seal a note. And I want to tell you, God don't make mistakes. When he seals us with, the, when he seals us with his stamp of approval, he doesn't break his seal. Isn't that so good? He saves us and we're secure. Our souls are in heaven. That's why we celebrate, right? That's why we're about to go out there and we're going to celebrate a baptism because they've been saved. They're, they're saved from a life separated from God. Sin and death and, and ultimately hell and being separated. But no, in Christ, we're saved. But then something happens, right? 
So our souls are secure with God. We've been saved only by the blood of Jesus through faith in Christ. But guess what? We didn't teleport to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't that be weird if somebody raised their hand after I get done preaching and poof, they're gone, right? Like, Pastor, what you, man, that's some, don't, no, don't be doing that, right? No. God leaves our bodies here in a sinful, broken world with other sinful, broken people. Correct? Right? And so the question becomes, if my soul's already there, what do I do while I'm here? Well, guess what? Paul said this, man, I long to be there and the blessing of the gospel is going to be what happens when I finally get there. But he says this, I do all this for the sake of the gospel that I may share in the blessings. Because see what happens when we understand the blessing of the gospel that we have in Christ, we want to become a blessing to other people. So as we're separated physically, not spiritually, we have a relationship with God in Christ. But as we're separated physically, our heart's desire is that we would receive and love his blessing and give that blessing to other people. Right, that we would begin to transform circles in this broken life, that we would begin to share the gospel with people that are looking to be there, that they're looking in the midst of the virus, in the midst of the brokenness, in the midst of people being mean and ugly, in the midst of heartbrokenness, in the midst of broken relationships, in the midst of pain and trial, they're looking for hope and God saved you to give them the hope where they are, amen? amen. And so we become a blessing Paul says, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll go to Ephesus. I'll go to Galatia. For us, it's to go to our neighbor. For us, it's to invite the coworker. For us, it's to start a disciple group at school. For us, it's the start of sharing the gospel with someone at breakfast. I'll go wherever it takes because I want to give this blessing I have to the people in my circle. I believe that's why God saved me, not from something, but to something. That's a purpose. Man, I mean, hey, we're good with clapping if you want to. If you guys are still stunned, that's all right. Listen, I'm going to preach, okay? Y'all good with that? If I see one of y'all sleeping, I'm going to get higher. You know what I'm saying? I'll be doing that. Just kidding. Online church, make sure you're, you're following with me here. Paul enjoyed the blessings of the gospel. Understand right now, we're left here. Paul's here with Jesus. You want to know what's a blessing? I'm sure not only does he get to be with Jesus for all eternity, but Paul's looking around at the people that, that got saved at Ephesus. He went and got beat up and went through trials, but yet there's people that are in heaven because he was faithful. There were people in heaven because he didn't want to stay comfortable uh, where he was, that he knew the gospel had to go forth. Paul didn't stay where he was. The blessings of the gospel the blessings of the gospel are those who will go with us. Hear that again. The blessings of the gospel now are those who will go with us because we were faithful. The blessing is heaven, right? Aren't y'all glad that this isn't the end game? I mean, look at our country this year. Aren't y'all glad that our hope's not here? I mean, it's not here. It's not and so we have a blessing waiting, but we can be a blessing and enjoy the blessing now that we take others with us as you go make disciples. Romans 10, 9 through 15. I want to share this and then we're going to do a little something different. The Bible says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What that means is if, if you've never trusted in the Lord, you believe that he is the son of God, that he can change your life. You don't want the life of death and sin. You want Christ. You'll be saved today and we're going to go bananas in here. But let's see what happens with that. It says, verse 10, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Now, verse 11, it says, as the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Amen. We're going to be here. Now, verse 12, it says, For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, check this out. This is the, the shift here. That's awesome, right? Like, that's good. We, we can receive Christ no matter where we are, what we've done. We can come to faith in Christ. He'll change our life. But hear this. It says, How then can they call on the one who they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Verse 15. It says, And how can anyone preach unless they are sent as you go? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet 
of those who bring the good news. Hear this, church. You are God. We are God's plan A to reach the world. Hear that again. God has no backup plan. The church, we are the beautiful feet. When we leave this place, we carry beautiful feet fitted with the gospel, ready to go into our places. If you haven't learned anything, we're about to talk about this just a second. If you haven't learned anything here, um, man, almost everyone that's here is here through people being sent. And man, I'm proud of that. I, I think that's incredible. And I want to give you an example today. Because you're like, Buck, you're talking about Paul. This is a guy who lived thousands of years ago. Let me, let me show you this being put into action. This is what I want to do. I want to talk about what someone did for the sake of the gospel. I want to talk about the blessing. And I would love for us to celebrate every story. Can you guys do that with me? In the midst of this turmoil, we need to celebrate. The first story is this. I want to show you guys a picture uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of a theater. I want to show you guys a picture of a theater. So if you look on the left right there, you'll see a church that says Connection Church. Theater folks, you watching, man, we appreciate you, right? But I want to tell you, three couples, okay? Three couples, Benton's Hills High Towers. All of us coaching wrestling, all of us in great jobs, all of us having a great time. Um, we began to be burdened. Three couples, six people. We began to be burdened. And the Holy Spirit began to press us that God wanted us to take Connection Church to another community. And I'll never forget it, right? We walked into uh, a coach's room, okay? We were throwing, my buddy Chuck was the head coach, uh, head basketball coach at Toombs County High School. I was the head wrestling coach at Toombs County High School. Um, Adam Hightower, one of my best friends, was the assistant coach with me. All three of us were comfortable, like, like we, were, we were pretty set, man. We loved the place where we all had houses and we, we were settled. And yet the Holy Spirit began to burden us that, that God wanted to do something in another community. He began to burden us for our friends in Dublin. He began to burden us to go. And I want to tell you, in all of a matter of months, three resignations went and we were on the way, right? Why? Because obedience is uncomfortable, but always worth it. Hear that again. Obedience is comfortable, and it's all, but it's always worth it. I want to tell you guys two stories real quick. I want you to look at a, a young man being baptized right here. I want you to look at a young man. A child should be... <clears throat> next picture. Hold on. Yes, sir. I want you to look at this picture. Okay? This is a father baptizing his son. Joe Coley, I want to talk about it for a second. Um, to my knowledge, almost never uh, misses Bible time at night with his kids. Does an incredible job of spending time with his kids. For the sake of the gospel, he, they read the word of God. Hear that again. You remember that? You remember that devotion Paul had? For the sake of the word of God, they read it. The blessing of the gospel is he's going to get to go to heaven with his child. Can we celebrate that? That's the blessing of the gospel. For the sake of the gospel, they read. Another story, I want you to look at another child. It's Grayson Owens, right? Because he saw the gospel worthy, he lived sent in his home. He read the Bible with his son. His son wanted to come to faith in Christ, said, Dad, this Jesus you've been teaching me about, uh, I want to come to know him. Can we celebrate? Thank you for the blessing of the gospel that he saw faithful to read. Our next story, I want you to look at a young lady, Morgan Hines and, and Lizzie. I want you to look at this picture right here. See, Morgan considered herself sent into her classroom. She met a young lady. They hit it off immediately. And she began to realize like, man, may maybe this relationship is built just for our mutual enjoyment. She began to, to bring her to church. She began to, to share the things of Christ, right? She considered herself sent for the sake of the gospel. She didn't leave the gospel here at church for an hour. She took it with her to the school. And for the sake of the gospel, she reached Lizzie. Lizzie's, gonna, hey, Lizzie's come to know Jesus. She's vibrant in our church. Thank you, Lord. Can we celebrate the blessing of the gospel? I want to share Mr. A.J. Wright. This young man right here, the reason all you guys are watching online is because he's running the camera, right? He's running Sling Studio. A.J. Wright, never been, a, never been a part of a youth group, brand new. We began to ask him to preach and, and share with the youth. He began to be faithful with where he was to preach the gospel, to, to, to model Christianity for kids. Let me tell you something. Because he was willing to get uncomfortable, we see people come to faith in Christ. What have we been saying all day? Obedience isn't comfortable, but it's worth it. Can we celebrate the blessing of the gospel in our students? And this next story, I want to share a young man from New Life. Okay, I'm going to share you a story. We're going to go to that one next. 
This man right here, okay? This man, we would have Bible study together on Monday nights in an addiction recovery home, right? I would get to go every Monday night, blessed to get to share the gospel. This young man wanted to come to know Jesus. He said, listen, I've, I've screwed my life up. Right, like I'm, I have burnt more bridges than there are to burn and I need something different. I need, a, I need a change, right? And sometimes it can be uncomfortable going into those settings. But man, we're there preaching the gospel because we believe um, he is worth it. We believe Chris's name is worth it. That it's gonna be written in heaven. Let me tell you the blessing of that. Go to the next. You know what happened a few weeks later? He didn't know diddly about, about the Bible, but he said, this same hope I got, I know some others. I'm going to bring pastor. Can I invite them to church? I said, brother, you bring them on. And my boy for a three week period became the best evangelist in our church. Brought people that need to hear the gospel. His friend from recovery came to faith in Christ. He baptized them. We follow Jesus and we do it all for the sake of the gospel. Can we celebrate that blessing? I want to show you this picture right here. There's going to be a lot of folks up on the screen. Now, I could talk the rest of this day, the rest of the afternoon about these people. I'm going to go one by one. This young man on the far left, his name's Thomas Bell. He grew up in church just like me, prayed the prayer, all those sorts of things. Actually, was leading worship somewhere. Felt like God had called him to church here, the connection to help us plant the church. He and I met over a Chick-fil-A burrito. He crushed burritos, by the way. Dude, I mean, look at those arms, right? Um, ate burritos together for a year. He said, I, I, wanna, I, I don't want to just receive the good stuff. I want to follow Jesus. Wanted to be baptized to let everyone know he's now led worship in multiple places. We've sent him out. He is a blessing because we've been a blessing. He's a blessing everywhere he goes. I want to talk about this young man, A.J. Wright, same thing. He said, I was never discipled. Came to faith in Christ, came apart, began to be uncomfortable. We, we shared uncomfortable things in discipleship. The Lord began to move in his life. He said, I want everybody to know it. And here he is now helping lead our church as a student pastor. Megan Brantley, same thing. Everyone in the county would probably say, man, they, they got it going on. She, she's got it, man. I wish I could be more like her. She looked face to face with the gospel and said, I, I don't want to just receive. I want to follow I, I want to get uncomfortable for the gospel. And let me tell you, she, she would hardly get up and play the keys. And God used her as she began to obey to fill in and lead worship. She's led us many Sundays. For the sake of the gospel, we get uncomfortable. And I want to tell you, another lady right here, skip a few other, Shelly Sheffield. She's praying for you every Sunday. And again, we all grew up in church together. It's a lot like my story. And I just think this is going to speak to someone. You may have made a decision when you were young. And then as you began to wrestle with the magnitude of the gospel, you started realizing it was more than just a place to go, but it meant God wanted to do something in my life. It meant I had to take steps to follow so much of my story. And so many of you would have been shocked. She said, I want to be baptized. And I'll never forget it. I told her on that day. I said, because you've obeyed, I promise you God's going to be a blessing. God's going to be a blessing to someone else through you. And let me tell you, she's been blessing people ever since that day. She's interceding for you every Sunday. And she has been a blessing. For the sake of the gospel, we do what's uncomfortable. Can we celebrate that? And again, I could share over and over. We've got another worship leader in here. We've got another person. She's in here today. Uh, we've got another one. Um, she serves faithfully in students. Why? Because they said yes to Christ. They got uncomfortable and said yes to Christ. They said yes to taking that next step. They said yes. And what people that didn't know a whole lot about much are now being used effectively in the kingdom. And let me tell you, as we begin to make disciples, we're going to plant churches out of here with people that, that, that didn't see much in themselves, but God saw much in them because they were available. So I believe God's going to continue to move and work. And so today, we get to celebrate that again. A sister inviting a sister, right? A small group getting serious about mission. A guy leading a small group, brand new to leading it, and just pouring out his heart, wanting to lead well, and we see a group beginning to embrace the mission, and we see a sister inviting a sister. We see someone coming to faith in Christ. In a minute, we're going to celebrate that. Because see, the gospel's still going forth. In the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of all the craziness, God's purposes still stand. And let me give you a secret. They never will fail. 
God said, you build your life on me. The storms will come, they'll batter, they'll, they'll fight against, but it'll stand, it'll stay. And so I want to speak to two people, and I want to go back to the question we started with. What will we do with the gospel? Those here today, I'll watch you online. What will we do the gospel? First of all, I want to share it. If you've never been set free from sin, if you've never let Christ, uh, let Christ come to your life and do something new, right? That, that, that you're tired of the old life. You're tired of, of all life has done, and you're like, man, I, I need something new and different. I, I want to, I, I don't, Pastor, I don't know how I know I believe it, but I believe what you're saying, and I need to place my faith in Christ today. Man, we want to celebrate that with you, and I, I just believe that's going to happen today. Um, but that's it. God wants to do something new in your life. It says we're saved by grace through faith in Christ. And so I want to tell you, your next step is your first step. Let's begin a new life in Christ today. For the rest of us, who needs to be reached in your life? What does God want to do with you with the gospel? What will we do with the gospel? Who are the people that need to be reached? How is God calling you to leverage your life for the gospel of Jesus? And so I, as you meditate on that, I'm going to pray, and I'm going to give an opportunity for salvation. If you'd say today, I want to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, the, those lives, I want to tell you, there were some broken places when the gospel met them, Right? There are some broken places, and I've watched God do something incredible. And so if that's you today, I want to encourage you to respond. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, if there's anyone here that, that you know new life needs to happen today, that the gospel's gone out, and you know there's someone here, God, I, I pray you give them the courage to respond. If that's anyone here, you'd say, Buck, you're talking to me. Uh, I, I need a relationship with Jesus. Would you just slip your hand up? Everybody's head down. Is that anyone here today? I'm going to give you guys just a moment. Lord, I know you're at work. I'm going to give you guys a moment. For all those in line, I want to share the same thing. I pray that the Lord's working on you, God, that you would, um, you would do what, what only you can do. For the rest of us, church, I pray that you would continue to work in this time. If if uh, anyone feels led, they need to come pray and ask lot God to give them strength. God, I pray that you would do that. And Lord, we just love you. Lord, we pray for, for you to move and work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to share real quick what we're going to do post-service. Um, if you're getting baptized today or doing the baptizing, you can go ahead and be dismissed. If anyone here today is like, Buck, I, I didn't quite want to respond, but I've got questions and I, I think this is what's happening. Feel free to come find me. I'd love to talk with you. I, I believe that, that God's at work in this room. I just believe that. Um, but for the rest of us, if you have children and you want to see baptisms, you can go ahead and go get them. We're going to do them immediately outside. Uh, we'll spread out six feet apart. We encourage you, if you have masks to wear them, um, that we will spread out and we will do baptisms immediately after service. We celebrate this as a church, this new life. And so if you need to go grab your children so they can be there, we want them to see it too. We want our connectors to see it because one of the reasons that we serve is to honor God and so that others would be served with the gospel. And so we'll worship the Lord this last song. And again, you can be dismissed if you're getting baptized and need to go get your children. Okay, we'll see you guys out front in just a moment. We love you so much. Please stand and sing with us. Give life, you are mine, you bring life. 
Have a great week. We'll see you outside in just a minute. To share uh, kind of what we're doing here. We're celebrating baptisms today. And so what, what we do is uh, we just believe, you know, just like we see in Scripture, everywhere in the New Testament, when someone comes to faith in Christ, uh, they're baptized as a step of obedience. And so that's what we're celebrating today. Um, in Scripture, we don't see that uh, baptism is set aside just for a preacher or a pastor. And just like we've been talking about in the series, uh, we, we want to go and make disciples uh, of the nations where we've been sent. And so this is an awesome story today uh, that we get to celebrate um, Diana and Isabel. And so we do it a little differently in our church. Once uh, we baptize, once they uh, do baptism, and we celebrate, we go like crazy because we really believe uh, it's incredible news. And so uh, let's go ahead and do that, okay? Diana, you can hop in. This will be Diana uh, Reagan baptizing her sister Isabel Larrera. Let's celebrate. Woo! celebrate good news. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good that God's still at work. So we want you to know if you're watching this, man, we're praying for you guys. Church family, we're continuing to pray, and uh, we just love the fact that God's faithful. All right? Let's pray together, and then we'll be dismissed. Father, we love you. 
Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. God, thank you for new life in Christ. God, we thank you for what you're doing here in the church. God, we pray by um, in faith alone in you, God, that you would continue the work. God, we pray protection, Psalm 91, over our church family, over our community, over our state, and over our nation, over the world, God. Lord, we love you, but God, ultimately, we're thankful that this earth is not our home, God. Thank you for the hope we have in Jesus. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's go read some more. Y'all have a great day.